In the previous video, we introduced the idea of using iterative techniques for solving linear systems of algebraic equations. In particular, we're looking at the Poisson equation using finite difference approximations. In the previous video, we look at Jacobi and gauss seidel Jacobi, we said, is fine for baseline comparison with other methods, but it's too slow and requires too much storage. gauss seidel fixes that by making one small change, and that is to use the most recently updated information as it becomes available. What I want to show you in this video is another method that can accelerate the gauss seidel method even more, and that's called successive over-relaxation, or SOR. It's based on an observation. The observation is that if I have the exact solution over here somewhere, now of course I normally don't know that ahead of time, but if I start out with my initial guess, the first iteration will of course move me closer to the exact solution, second iteration will get me closer, third iteration even closer, and what you'll notice if you look at this iterative process is you can think of taking steps. Each iteration is a step closer, closer, closer to the exact solution. And those steps are relatively small, which is why we need so many iterations for it to converge iteratively to the correct solution. So the idea behind SOR is if I know that the direction of gauss seidel is correct, but the magnitude is too small, I'm being too conservative, why not take a bigger step in that particular direction each iteration, and I'll get there faster. This only works for linear systems, does not work for nonlinear systems. In fact, for nonlinear systems, as I'll mention, we probably need to under-relax. So here's the basic idea. So we get our gauss seidel iterate, the uijn plus 1, as we did in the previous video. We'll call that uij star. We're going to use a relaxation parameter, omega, here to take a weighted average of the previous and the gauss seidel approximation in order to get the uijn plus 1 approximation. So gauss seidel would give us uij star. The SOR is going to be some linear combination of that along with the previous value, according to this, 1 minus omega of previous and omega of the gauss seidel So the value of omega is between 0 and 2 for convergence. Omega is equal to 1, corresponds to gauss seidel because that would get rid of this first term, and it's just 1 times uij star, which is gauss seidel If we increase the value of omega from 1 to 2, then we have over-relaxation. We're taking a bigger step than gauss seidel tells us to. If we have omega between 0 and 1, then we're taking smaller steps than is prescribed by the gauss seidel method. Again, under-relaxation is often necessary for nonlinear problems. Nonlinear problems, we have to be very careful about the size of the step, so we often have to take shorter steps in order to keep it on track to converge. But for linear cases, we can often take bigger steps and dramatically increase the convergence rate in the form of many fewer iterations. Let's again analyze it using the matrix representation. So now m1 is going to be d, that was for Jacobi, minus omega times l. Remember gauss seidel was just d minus l, now it's d minus omega times l. And then everything else goes into m2. This looks messy, but don't worry about the details. It's the same approach. So the iteration matrix m is the inverse of m1 times m2, which is now this mess right here. The point being, we now have an additional parameter, the relaxation parameter omega, that I have to choose in order to speed up the convergence process. So how do I choose omega, and how much does it accelerate the convergence process? Well, it turns out that for our model problem, we know the optimal value of omega. That's not normally the case. Normally, we'll have to find omega using trial and error. But for our model problem, we know that the optimal omega is 2 over 1 plus the square root of 1 minus the spectral radius for Jacobi squared. And we also know that the spectral radius for SOR is equal to omega optimal minus 1. Again, these are only true for our specific model problem. But given that, let's analyze to see how much faster this might be. So remember, the spectral radius for Jacobi for very large n is 1 minus a half times the square of pi over capital I plus 1. If we substitute that in here for the spectral radius for Jacobi, you can see that here, we square that and we get 1 minus the square of pi over capital I plus 1. 1 minus 1 that cancels and minus minus becomes plus, so we have the square root of the square. So we have 2 over 1 plus pi over capital I plus 1. Now this term, because I is large, is always going to be less than 1. So we can use the binomial expansion to write this 1 over 1 plus something smaller than 1 as 1 minus the something. Just look that up. That's the binomial theorem expansion. 
so now we have an estimate for the optimal value of omega when the number of points is large. Well, from that, we can subtract off one, and that gives us an estimate for the spectral radius for SOR. So here is the omega optimal that we just had, minus one, so this is two times one, which of course is one, minus two pi over capital I plus one, which you see here. So again, I is big, so this term is small, and it's one minus that small number, always less than one, so this process will always converge. But what we wanna do is compare this second term to see how much smaller than one the spectral radius is compared to Gauss-Seidel or Jacobi. Now before I do that, let's just recognize that as the number of points I gets larger, the value of omega optimal goes to two, as this term would go away and we just get two, and the spectral radius goes to one, because again, this term would go away and we would just have one. So it still has this property as the size of the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's gonna take more and more iterations before it converges. However, the question is at what rate? And what you'll see is if you look back from the previous video, the spectral radius for SOR is always smaller than that for Gauss-Seidel, and it's smaller such that the rate is two times capital I plus one over pi times faster than Gauss-Seidel. Gauss-Seidel, you'll have an iterative convergence process. SOR will converge faster to the same level of iterative convergence as Gauss-Seidel in fewer iterations. The improvement is linear as compared to Gauss-Seidel. You see that here. So as I gets bigger, the improvement as compared to Gauss-Seidel gets better and better and better and be significantly faster than Gauss-Seidel. One of the problems with SOR is I now have this additional parameter that I have to select, this omega. Normally we don't know what the optimal value of omega is as is the case for our model problem. So I just have to find it through trial and error. And the other problem is it's affected by essentially every aspect of the problem. The only thing that does not affect the omega is f of x, y. Everything else, the shape of the domain, the differential equation itself, how I discretize it, the boundary conditions, all of those things affect the final system of equations and therefore affect the spectral radius and therefore affect the omega. So typically we don't know what omega optimal is. It's somewhere between one, which is the Gauss-Seidel value, and two, but we don't know where it is. It's also the case that rho, the spectral radius, is very sensitive to omega. If I plot rho, versus omega for a typical linear problem. So here's omega zero, one, which is Gauss-Seidel, and two, which is the maximum value of omega. We need our spectral radius to be less than one in order for it to converge. And the more less than one it is, the lower it is, the smaller it is, the better. So whatever the row is for Gauss-Seidel, that's right here. For under relaxation, you can see it's not as good for the linear case. And then as you increase from one towards two, it dives down till you reach a minimum. That is the optimal value of omega, but then it increases very rapidly. So there's this optimal sweet spot. If you can get that omega value just right, you can have a dramatic speed up as compared to Gauss-Seidel by itself. But if you don't get it right on, you could actually be worse, as is the case up here. So if you have the time to determine an optimal value of omega, often through trial and error, then it's worth the time if you're gonna do a whole bunch of what we call production runs with that given omega for a particular problem. Now the other thing you can do is use an estimated value from a similar problem. So maybe your problem isn't exactly the same as this model problem, but you can use this at least as a starting point for searching where the optimal omega is. Now in the next video, we're gonna look at a more advanced method called the alternating direction implicit or ADI method. It's a numerical method that's more faithful to the mathematical character of the Poisson elliptic equation. We'll discuss that in the next video.